the title of my presentation will be, of my small presentation will be, No Man is an Island. And we heard about Plassey already, and uh, I read several contributions in the catalogue which, with which I agree. As an artist, I'm a Vienna-based artist, uh, but you asked me to, um, to summarize the situation in Vienna, more or less. And I can talk about it uh, from the standpoint of, uh, of a, a young artist at that time. So what were the characteristics of the 1990s for young artists at that time? It was a time of upheaval in Europe. The Iron Curtain fell. The Cold War was over. Shortly before this, in 1988, I made a kind of important gesture as work when I came to Berlin for the, first, for the very first time. Uh, can I have the photo number one? It's, <laughs> we see very little. <laughs> it's very nice, but uh, it will be shown, I think, uh, better in the, in, the, uh, in the online. I was invited by a gallery in Berlin, Kreuzberg, and I decided uh, at the time to enter Berlin uh, from the east in order to grasp the meaning uh, about where I find myself now. I made a work about the Berlin Wall in 80, 1988. In eight, in 1988. Um, a little boy from the couple that hosted me digged and buried small iron balls into the ground along the Berlin Wall with the assistance of his parents. The boy liked my steel balls, which had been installed as a line in the opening of the, uh, at the opening of the gallery, and he wanted to pluck them all from the floor. A year later, the wall fell, and shortly after this, the iron curtain opened. My wall piece, called Setzung B, B is for Berlin, 1507-89 uh, was then shown in Vienna as serigraphy on the wall. I can explain it later for who wants to know more. Uh, I would need the photo number two, please. I will explain you what is on the, on the image later. Anyway, Vienna moved closer to the heart of the international developments and became focal point of a European cultural scene that was opening towards the East. In 1995, Georg Schöllhammer and Hedwig Sachsenhuber from Vienna founded the magazine Springer. As researchers and curators, they were since then engaged in issues of urban and cultural transformation, focusing Central and Eastern Europe. Some of you might also know the institution Kulturkontakt Austria in Vienna. Recently, I met Annemarie Türk again, who celebrated with a nice laudatio the Ukrainian poet, poet and Kramer Prize winner Tanya Maliarchuk. And Mrs. Türk was our important partner when we had invited Eastern co-artists. In 1989, the Kulturkontakt Austria Association began its operations as an intermediary between artists, cultural institutions, and companies as one of the first European institutions to actively promote culture in the described countries. Similar to the city of Graz, which from the beginning and up to now has established institutions like Kulturvermittlung Steiermark, that would give residences to Balkan and Southeast European artists. Um, I'll have an exhibition next week in Graz, and 
my involved co-artists from Belgrade uh, will profit from such an art residency. Uh, I have some material, you can see it later. Photo three, please. Talking about my own biography during the 1990s, it is a matter of fact that every year where there were some events going on with the Eastern countries inspired by them. Even together with my students at the uh, University of Applied Arts in Vienna, to whom in 93 I handed over my own invitation for Gallery On in Poznan. They made a nice exhibition there as a semester work and we printed a catalogue. In 97, I got a grant and could have chosen Chicago or Krakow, Poland, for a four months studio offered by our ministry. I took the latter and experienced Krakow. Sorry, Michael, if I didn't take USA. <laughs> but at the time, I really was interested in my neighbors. and. I have one contact, a recent contact, uh, to Krakow-based Anna. I always, uh, am, I always uh, have some kind, feel some kind of joy when when I meet uh, my eastern neighbors. I don't know why. No man is an island, in fact, but some places become islands for a certain time, such as Plasi, or in my case, born in Styria. It was the Schwarzenberg Meierei in Scheifling, beneath the ruins of the castle Schwarzenberg, starting in the 1990s. Meanwhile, the initiative is, na is named Hotel Pupik, a place off the center with two buildings, originally a former stable and a farmhouse, offered by Karel Schwarzenberg, the later foreign minister in Prague. His noble family has a castle in the area in Murau and possesses woods in Styria. These summer symposiums were founded by Heimo Wallner, Uli von Bank, Schädler and others as an art association. Meanwhile, it entered in a residency program for artists from abroad and always musicians too, open to them. It is still very much alive and co-organized by a younger collective, among them Johanna, the daughter of Heimer. According to Heimer Wallner, Pupik is a quote from Marian Paller, Czech name for Navel. I met Paller as a resident artist at the Schrattenberg Symposium Hammerschlag in 91. Uh, there were mainly Czech and Slovak artists invited, recommended by Josef Cherish. Uh, I talked to Michael Murin about it uh, when we had uh, lunch, because he was one of the artists. And Czechoslovakia was still one land. Thus, Heimo Wallner was a pioneer and very early inviting Eastern colleagues. Speaking of connection, Plassi, Schrattenberg, and vice versa, it was actually Heimon who introduced me to Plassi, initiator Milos. These were exciting years. Schrattenberg had become a place to visit every summer. There, the intermedial symposia had picked up speed and now encompassed the sonic, the cinematic, the digital. My first encounter with the person and work of Phil Niblock was there and therefore unforgettable. Photo four. Through Milos, I participated in Plasi three times. The first time I met the musician and visual artist Michael Delia from USA, who still likes to cook food a la Napoli for hermit friends. Just recently, he painted my portrait as part of the friends Serious. Very long friendship. 
Florence Neal from New York was a participant in the discourse on documentation of the previous Plasi Symposia. She, in turn, brought me and others from Plasi Circuit, such as Martin Z, to her Kentle drawing space in Brooklyn for also uh, for a solo exhibition. This, uh, this image is um, behind me. Uh, and mine was there in 98. And after that, I went directly to Niblox Ex Experimental Intermedia Foundation for a video presentation, first in New York and later in Ghent, Belgium. We heard already about Phil Niblox in this gathering. And would, would you send the video now? But very uh, reduced the sound. <laughs> Uh, let me come to a conclusion while showing a video from 97, Italy, et tutuno, it's all, the, it's all one, on the occasion of the Osmosis Symposium of my own Italian group, with music from Rajesh Mehta, who I met performing in Plasi. Such a symposium is a treasure trove of future activities. It was not unlike an academy, but more flexible and diverse, cross-generational and anti-hierarchic, also more chaotic. I have taught at art academies. I have also co-founded artist groups such as, such a symposium means quality and togetherness and experience of performances. It remains sensually amplified in the echoes of the individuals. There is a mutuality in showing off to each other, of free experimenting, of observing, of arguing, and importantly, of eating and drinking together. The notes of networking were the Schattenberg, Hotel Pupik, Plasi, Hermit Foundation, New York, Experimental Intermedia, or Milan, O Artoteca, the letter through Sara Serigelli from my Italian network since the mid 1990s, seem to have something in common. This strong, often very suggests, very suggestive places are connected to concrete people and their team, who are always enablers and fundamentally non-competitive. They are experimental in their artistic attitude, as well as informed, transnational, curious, and cooperative. They are experimental, I said already, but they freely offer food for mind and body and for networking. They should be seen as culturally essential and therefore supported just like museums and galleries are. Unlike such institutions, they are not a governmental or private sector container for secured art. Where cash flows, curated discourse and public outreach can attract a larger audience and introduce them to culture. So thanks to the museum here and to the archive that they are providing. It is a different matter with the anarchic power for such kind of symposia I was describing, which are often justifiably considered legendary. They gather the best minds, even if they get tired after a decade or sooner, and their, fund, and their funding dries up, they will nevertheless stand the test of time. The best example probably is the Foundation. Thank you for listening.